what IID has done right in driving change, because the objective of the organization is to change the power, to contribute to, you can, have, you can hardly put it on IED's shoulders to change the power relations in the world. I think that's going too far, even for people <laughs> like us, Rebecca. Um, I think that what IID has contributed, though, is enormous energy and en enormous collaborative strength with people who are actually on the ground, whether it's the organization Slum Dwellers International, with whom IID has worked for years, uh, in, or its work on uh, participatory learning, and the participation has been built into their programs from the beginning. So it's been a contribution both technically in how do you do that? How can you assist local governance? How can you work with groups that are clearly advocating for a better world but doing so on a basis of serious evidence. Mm -hmm. I think that's been their contribution to change. It's those ideas have been they have contributed. Also, you can document on land rights questions. You can look and see changes in legislation that have come about directly mm -hmm. as a result of their work. Development officials have a way of having fads and fancies mm -hmm. about things. Yeah. If you think about IID's work, uh, with uh, with communities in in dry land areas in the desert and the way in which that work continued over many many years now it's being picked up again but there were many years where IID was if not on its own it was part of a very small cadre that understood yeah, what the contributions were mm -hmm. of these uh, communities of people who move from place to place yeah. with their herds so it's uh, IDs had, uh, a, I think, a big impact in the realm of ideas, in the way in which you can be activist, but evidence-based, mm -hmm. and also the work that they've done in international fora, whether it's the COP process or any of the climate change conferences, the work they've been doing directly with least developed countries to uh, provide assistance to the negotiating capacity of those, uh, of those teams. All of that has been very important for change. Yes, I really think that the you know that combination that you you, you talk about that is the combination of research and action on the ground is is a rare combination. Usually, you have only one of those exactly. happening, and it's very powerful to have them both. And I think that you are right that there is a huge contribution of trying to put serious research and evidence-based uh, action in the hands of the people that has to make that happen. Exactly. You know, not thinking that you will make it happen alone just because no. you have the evidence. You know, to put it in the hands of the people for them to be able to act on it, understand it, and act on it to, you know, to improve their lives. I think that is a very, very powerful combination. And you are right that they also their, their participation in the international fora makes it not only a local, you know, action, but it makes it also a national exactly. and international action that is the, the right chain to, to consider. But uh, it's very difficult for a research organization to have this connection with the people, with the communities on the ground. And uh, it's, it's amazing that the IIED has, has maintained that for so long. And I think that definitely, as you say, is, is, is a huge strength. And also working with groups in communities on the ground means that the kind of questions that researchers turn their minds to are going to be different. So it isn't absolutely it isn't just that the yeah. you know the brilliance yes. of the evidence is yeah. then picked up by people and they act on it. Yes. No, 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 they influence the agenda influence, for research. They influence the agenda for research. And their 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 wisdom and their knowledge is also taken into account. Uh, that is so important because they are usually not heard, you know, and if you want to change, you know, their, uh, their, the power relations on the ground, you, you want to empower them, you have to first start to make visible their knowledge and their contribution already to many of the problems, not only as recipients, but really as actors also in the research agenda in terms of knowledge, wisdom, you know, from, from uh, so many, from their history, from their culture, 
from their traditions, not very important. And also, the board has always had some representation from people who are working with communities on the ground. Uh -huh. And and we had we had exactly that experience today when mm -hmm. Samsuk said to us, yes. well, in the organization, like who is being listened to yes. here? What yes. is the yes. what is the nature of the yes. uh, of the voices being yes. heard around yes. the table? Yes. Very so strong. It, very strong on that. Mm -hmm. So and uh, there has always been that connection right up to the board level, which I also think is important. Mm -hmm. No, that is true. Uh, also what you said, Maureen, that uh, uh, IIED has maintained an agenda that for a long time was like preaching in the desert. Yes, the, not everybody was there when IIED already was in some of the issues, and now they have become you know, very important and relevant issues also in the international discussion. And I think that this intersection of environment and poverty will continue to be really at the center of the discussion in the international arena and on, with the development partners because this is really what the equation we need to solve. <laughs> How to make that happen at the same time, you know, fight poverty and live in a more sustainable world, make things in a more sustain, sustainable way. And the, I think that this is a very important point on what IIED is doing. And we need more evidence and more, you know, action on the ground with the evidence we have uh, to show that it's possible to be done and that the solutions are there, that we can have both at the same time. Unfortunately, I think that, don't you, don't you have this feeling that still, you know, the different communities debate, you know, they, the, the, those of us that have come from the development side, we say, yes, sustainable development. But fighting poverty is the most important. Exactly. And those that come from the environmental community, they say, yes, sustainable development. But you know, sustainability in, in an environmental sense is the most important. And we need you know, these two communities to really come together. You know, independently of what is your entry point, the important thing is that you have to get to the same place. Exactly. And, the, and where know, there's a challenge that still remains, uh, with IID is how to think about the gender dimension within the work on environment and poverty. There's been, there has been movement on that mm -hmm. and I don't know why it is and it's not only IID. On this issue, people who work on sustainable development and poverty seem to have a hard time figuring out what is the issue. Mm -hmm. And yet, when you remember, when you recall, mm -hmm. if you look at who's poor, most of the people who are poor in the world are women. So there's an area where there's going to be still lots of work to be done yeah. 